I didn't come into this industry to inspire people. That, that had never, ever been a part of my decision-making process. It was based initially out of anger and rage, and then I began doing it, and I began loving doing it. And that was it. I'm just living my life the way that I choose to live it. I got thrusted. I got forced into this kind of inspirational position. And it was when I got back from my first deployment as a one-legged guy, something that had never happened before. And the Army and Special Operations Command and wanted to highlight what we yeah, did here. Of course. You know, it's a hell of a story. But I think more so it was about it's about what you're talking about. Let's let's enable somebody else. It wasn't about me or them trying to give me the spotlight moment or like fame or anything. It was, wow, we, we did something pretty unique here. Let's not keep this to ourselves. That was the idea. But I began being asked to, you know, go to interviews and go talk to senior leaders and speak on behalf of our strength and conditioning program. You know, I became this kind of asset that our leaders would use to demonstrate what is possible with the collective, you know, because it wasn't just me by myself, anything farther than that. I had hundreds of people that enabled me to do this. And I, I fought that kicking and screaming. And I learned very quickly when a four-star general asks you to do something, he ain't asking you anything. That's an order. You will show up here and you will do well and you will effectively communicate you what you perform, did yeah. and what we did to this target audience. I learned that pretty fast. So, and I fought it. I just wanted to be a team guy, man. I just, I want, I'm an SF guy. I'm on a team. This is my job and this is what I want to do. Please don't treat me any differently. And I realized very quickly that there is, there is power in uniqueness. In fact, that's what special means. People think special forces. Many think elite or like the best of the best. And while that is true, special just means different. It's synonymous with different. We just do things differently. And it is by virtue of just how different we are, that's what makes us elite. So yeah, I am different. Mathematically, in reality, I'm one of X number. There is value within that. And it took me a minute to see that. But once I did, and I began to see the effect that it was creating, initially on just my little small bubble, like my teammates, family, friends, I began to see that sphere of influence kind of grow. And the effect is something that I've started to become more and more in love with. Just that, that feedback of, wow, I've taken things to another level or thank you so much because I didn't, I didn't know how to do this one little task and now you've given me some insight. And it just kind of slowly builds and it kind of keeps going and you, you expose yourself a little bit more, you let yourself a little get more vulnerable, you battle with that question of, am I violating this ethos of being a quiet professional by putting this stuff out there? And just a lot of internal conflict with, am I doing the right thing for the right reasons? And I continue to struggle with that to this day. If I go do you know, a piece of content or if I go to a public event and or whatever it is, it's like, is this okay? Because I owe so much to this organization, this community, and I wanna be representing them accordingly and professionally and with respect. And I've just learned that I know what my values are and I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. And the effect is obvious. And I'm, thanks to the internet and social media, the world's gotten really small. I'm able to see that with my own eyes. I'm able to feel that impact that is created. So it's an unusual place for me to, to be in a position to inspire people, particularly people on the other side of the world. Um, but it's not only is it humbling, but it's also a great honor. And I consider it to just be um, a responsibility at this point. Yeah, I mean, I... I can't even imagine coming back from that next deployment and now getting all this recognition for all the work you put in when all of the training up to that point is not to seek the spotlight, it's to be the ultimate team player. Right. And that duality of being pulled and told in one direction, hey, we need you in the spotlight now. Yeah. And all of your training saying, no, this isn't about the spotlight at all. Yeah, and you know what? While uncomfortable and awkward and and difficult that was eventually and relatively early on i was able to see it as an opportunity to highlight what the people around me did and the role that they played and the this idea of being self-made is 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 ridiculous and in fact it's it's extremely debilitating and limiting if you think that you're going to go at something literally on your own you will lose in the grand scheme of things you may win some battles 
but you're going to lose. You're going to lose to the person that has the humility and recognition and self-awareness that they've got weaknesses and gaps and they go deliberately out and find humans or opportunities that can help make them better and fill those gaps. That's who wins consistently long-term. So even though I would became this dog and pony show limelight target, it, every time it gave me a chance to say, yeah, I'm the guy up here with the one leg and I'm the guy that got back from the thing and I'm about to go on to the next thing. And yeah, I had to put in a lot of really hard work and make a lot of great sacrifices and the discipline and the work ethic and all those things. I had to do that myself. No one could do those things for me, but I would not be standing here in front of you right now with any of these accomplishments had it not been for hundreds of people that you may not be able to see them. They're not literally standing next to me right now, but they are very much standing next to me right now. From the people that pulled me off the battlefield when I was originally wounded, to the surgeons that kept me alive through some miracle, the PTs at Walter Reed, my docs, my orthos, my dietitians, my strength coaches, my teammates, my friends, my family, none of this happens without them. And that enables me quite a bit to continue to do things like I'm doing with you right now. Literally a spotlight is on me. As you and I sit here, yeah. it's, it's not me, man. It's, there, there are hundreds of people sitting in the same exact seat right now. You just can't see them.